All right, guys, Cuddleboy32 here, check it out. So we're coming to you from the hotel room of freedom. And I uh, felt this was worthwhile to take a break from the old vacation here. And yeah, for everybody who thinks I take a vacation every other week, it's not so true. <laughs> I work. <laughs> and uh, this is the first vacation we've had in a while, man. 17,000 people are going to be coming through this airport down here on Saturday. And we are getting the hell out of Dodge before that happens. And the majority of these folks from uh, New York that are down here, it's interesting. So in any case, uh, what's this video about? We're talking about David Chipman. Now, it's uh, been kind of leaked that uh, he, O oh Biden, the one, is going to go ahead and announce that he, that is who he is going to appoint as the director for the ATF. Now, why is this important? Well, in my opinion, a director of any team does not, does, you cannot have an agenda. Does that make sense? You cannot have an agenda going into an organization as a director, specifically as it directs to uh, shutting down certain industries, filling out an agenda for the president. Uh, as a director of the FBI, do you work for the president? Well, technically, yes, but you shouldn't be influenced by the president. And that's where the dangers of this guy. And uh, I want to take talk uh, a minute here real quickly uh, and thank Dave Wolf for sending all this information into me, man. It was really, really cool. But the most important part about this was this guy's resume. He is a uh, old ATF agent, and he's got a lot of history with those guys. He started out in 1987 with the Office of the Inspector General, uh, General Services Administration, in Washington Field Office. And then from 88 to 93, and I'm going to put the link down below to this guy's resume. It's going to be a short video, but it's just to give you some insight on where he is. Uh, he started working in the Office of Field Operations for the ATF in 1988 to 1993. Uh, used informants to target armed career criminals in possession of firearms and drugs. Apprehended kingpins responsible for trafficking hundreds of firearms from Virginia to New York. And I guess that's why that Ralph Northam felt compelled that he had to go ahead and put a limit on how many firearms you Virginians can buy because, well, those guns were being trafficked up to New York. So no fault of your own, you are now limited to one gun a month. And it's always how they look at this thing is that if somebody else does something, well, you, the citizen, have to pay and give up your freedoms. In 1993 to 1998, the Office of Field Operations, ATF, Houston Field Division, Waco. And this is where uh, he got involved in the Waco thing, saying that they had two Barrett uh, 50 cows that shot down two helicopters. Uh, I'm just going to leave that there. Okay, 1999 to 2001, Office of Field Operations, ATF, Detroit Field Division, Arson Explosives Group, Detroit. <laughs> Move down. Managed eight agents overseeing all arson explosives and tobacco diversion and investigations in southeastern Michigan. Led the national response team activations to large scale fireworks, factory explosion, and trucking terminal arson tied to the. All right, well, pfft. anyway, this is almost like a, a kid's uh, resume. He's got everything in the mother on here. 2001 to 2002, Office of Field Operations, ATF Field Division. Uh, managed 10 agents. Well, I wonder if uh, he was on the fries, making fries at that point in time in his life. 2002 to 2004, Officer Field Operation ATF Field Management Staff. Yada, yada, yada. He gets into it, but then uh, ATF Enforcement Program Services, 2005, and then 2005 to 2006, Enforcement Programs, blah, blah, blah. But here's where it really gets interesting, okay? Um, he gets tied in with these associations. And in 2012, the, he went to work for the Office of Public Affairs and General Affairs in Washington, D.C. So this is where he starts getting into the, the, the really nitty gritty things of what he wants. So <clears throat> in 2012 to 2013, Mayors Against Illegal Guns, New York's New York, uh, at the AM, Mayors Against Illegal Guns. And, hey, dude, we're all about being against illegal guns. But what I kills me is that these guys, they're part of illegal guns. For some reason, it's my fault and your fault. Uh, the largest gun violence prevention advocacy <laughs> organization in the country advised bodies considering legislation to advance gun safety or gun control. Testified in Congress, uh, served on panels led by Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz in her home district in Florida. Now, of course, if you know Debbie Wasserman Schultz, every time that something comes up, she's trying to uh, extend her grip, her grasp around the gun control thing. Uh, 
bullets, managing bullets, getting off rid of online stuff. She's she's the mayor, major source of our issues. <clears throat> Attended the media boot camp in advance, trained, funded by the Joyce Foundation, following Newtown. Both prints said, this is where it all gets into it. Uh, broadcast media included NPR's All Things Considered, Chris Matthews, Hardball, and Tamron Hall's News Nation. All left-leaning agenda, anti-gun, gun, pro-gun control. And this is where we're getting into seeing what this next ATF director is going to be all about. Providing training, support, maintenance, liaison to Joyce Foundation, the American Responsible Solutions, the Brady Campaign, uh, Coalition to Stop Gun Violence. So, so here it is. He's advising all these groups. Uh, and it's scary that this guy is going to be now head of the ATF. I don't have a problem with his history with the ATF, but what I have a problem with is his history after the ATF. Uh, let's talk about this uh, spot shotter. He went to work for the spot shotter guys. If you remember, we were talking about the uh, guys who were making the uh, 80% had their factory over there in Detroit, and they were able to zero in and basically using this piece of equipment. Uh, somebody said that that was unconstitutional. And then here's the biggest part, 2016 to present, Washington, D.C., senior policy advisor to Giffords, courage to fight gun violence. He is coming directly from a gun control advocacy group to the ATF. What do you think this is going to mean for you and I? Put your comments in the link down below. Senior advisor to former Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords and Navy combat veteran and retired NASA astronaut Captain Mark Kelly. Co-founders of Giffords, the advocacy group is committed to urging leaders to enact common sense policies. Common sense to who, as we always ask, that keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people and reduce gun violence. Manage Giffords Law Enforcement Coalition, charged with providing firearms policy training to members of Congress. This is some sick shit, and this is what it's all about. Anyway, short video, didn't want to go too long. We got to get out there and uh, have some fun today. But with that being said, I'll always end them like this. Dude, guys, leave your comments down below. Shall not comply with this BS. This translucent, ridiculous person who's in office as our president who does what people tell him to do because hey, he can't figure out where he is for today. God bless America. God bless his men, women in uniform 24-7 for our freedom because freedom is not free. I'm talking about the men and women in uniform who better back us up when it comes time to limit the powers of government because this shit's getting ugly. In the next couple of years with this guy at the ATF, yeah, yeah. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. I'm KB32, and I am out of here. Peace.